Hi, I am Sivji, and uh, I'll be talking about uh, Apache Bookkeeper, which is the storage tier behind uh, Apache Pulsar, and uh, how Bookkeeper is used uh, within Pulsar. And the idea is to not only uh, look at Pulsar or Bookkeeper, but uh, um, the idea is to understand Bookkeeper enough, uh, how Bookkeeper uh, shows data, replicates data, how is it used in Pulsar, and how it could possibly be used even across your streaming, messaging, databases, and all of uh, different use cases. Um, and secondly, the idea is also to understand uh, in the spirit of the track, which is messaging, um, how to use it as a pulsar, as an example. And um, my uh, hope is that once you understand the internals of Apache Bookkeeper, uh, you can uh, fine tune pulsar better, you can configure it better, uh, so it exactly matches your uh, use case on top of Pulsar or uh, Bookkeeper or anything that else that you would want to make on top of Bookkeeper or even RocksDBS for that matter. Um, so um, a bit about myself first. I am a senior member of technical staff at Nutanix. My expertise is around uh, platform engineering. Um, where I work on uh, databases, um, service-oriented architecture. I have worked on uh, architecting uh, microservices. I have worked on infrastructure. And the uh, last couple of years, I have been exclusively working on uh, streams, mostly. I love distributed data systems. I sort of um, get uh, into these conferences, meet people. I sort of learn a lot from these. And that is why I try to contribute back. Um, I have been um, tracking a lot of different open source um, software, most of them uh, under Apache Foundation. And uh, uh, in a bit to sort of uh, give back, uh, I have some contributions in Pulsar and some in MySQL as well. So as part, as part of this presentation, we'll first look at why a key value store is important. Um, we will look at what Bookkeeper is, what is it made of? And finally, we look at how to use Bookkeeper. Uh, let's start with uh, a little bit of uh, history of the data stores to put uh, everything into perspective. Um, if you look at the history of databases, um, databases uh, sort of started uh, very early in 1960s. Around that, uh, the first databases used uh, flat files. So people used to just um, they write their data in flat files. The problem was that uh, finding the files which contains the data you exactly need uh, used to be uh, time taking. And because your fetch takes time, your uh, read will take time, your um, writes will take time. And whether is it a, a new write or a widget insert, or update or delete, you always have to fetch first. Uh, so because fetch used to take time, latency used to be higher. Um, updates could uh, mean you have multiple copies and then they would be stale copies and all of that. Uh, so to overcome that, th there was a need to evolve. Uh, and then uh, the next that came up was hierarchical databases. Hierarchical databases are, uh, think of it as like um, directory structure or something, right? Uh, where locating uh, data would be comparatively easier. The problem again was that uh, you only had this uh, one to many uh, sort of uh, relationship, not many to many. And then uh, uh, later there was this development in academia on uh, relational algebra uh, on top of which uh, your SQL or uh, relational databases were born and uh, have they stood the test of time. 1980s to 2021 still being used. Um, uh, it basically provided your uh, SQL semantics, so higher level language, uh, schema in terms of tables, columns, and whatnot, transactions with asset properties, uh, uh, indexes. We will look a little bit into indexes uh, going forward in the presentation in uh, um, traditional systems as well as the new workloads today. Um, around 2004, there was um, a lot happening on internet. So there was a lot of data being generated and relational databases because of their uh, inability to uh, scale horizontally um, and uh, sort of uh, focusing mostly on uh, read throughput. 
sacrificing uh, rights were uh, not sufficient for all the use cases. And that is when uh, NoSQL revolution took off. So you wanted to sort of uh, relax on structure and uh, asset properties and all those stuff. Uh, but then you wanted to make sure that you could uh, scale and scaling uh, could be done on horizontal scaling on commodity databases. And uh, now uh, in 2010s, now you look at uh, distributed SQL databases like uh, Yugabyte, like uh, CockroachDB, which are really taking off. And for certain cases that need uh, those relational structures, SQL and all of that, uh, it's, it's a good thing that is coming up. Uh, coming back to the streams, um, Apache Kafka actually uh, led the whole thing. Uh, it was built inside uh, LinkedIn, then it becomes open source. And uh, then finally, uh, it uh, became uh, Apache project. Pretty much four or five years later, Yahoo felt the need uh, to do uh, certain things better. And in my opinion, I would say uh, Apache Pulsar is uh, really the V2 of uh, streaming and messaging together. Um, that provides you right latency uh, of a single uh, digit milliseconds. Um, and uh, it's open source and it's a top, top level Apache project again. Uh, we talked about uh, we're talking about big, uh, Bookkeeper in this presentation. Bookkeeper again was uh, born out of Yahoo Research. Uh, uh, the interesting bit is that um, Zookeeper is such a popular project today behind a lot of uh, open source uh, distributed uh, data stores. And uh, Bookkeeper actually uh, came out of Apache Zookeeper. And again, it's a sub project. Uh, it used to be a sub project under Zookeeper, and then it became a top level Apache project. It's an open source uh, software. So uh, what is Bookkeeper actually? If you don't know of it already, um, it, it really, I think, is something that uh, hasn't been tapped as much as the capacity uh, of Bookkeeper is. Um, uh, Bookkeeper basically provides an infinite stream of log records. Think of your uh, right ahead logs in your traditional uh, database uh, systems. Uh, it's, an, uh, uh, it's a very similar sort of an abstraction that Bookkeeper provides. Uh, it provides you a horizontally scalable storage. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, it is fault tolerant, so it replicates data um, synchronously as well as asynchronously to um, different uh, uh, nodes if you want that. And in that way, it is fault tolerant for you. Uh, it provides you low latency rights, and we will see uh, how it does that. And it offers durability, of course. Uh, it uh, has tunable replication. So you can have uh, around sort of three different uh, parameters that you can tune to get exact level of replication. And uh, if you look at the whole uh, cap theorem thing, uh, it's a CP database. So it favors uh, strong consistency. If you look at the bookkeeper example, um, the implementations of bookkeeper uh, are uh, varied. They are used not only in Apache Pulsar, which is uh, what we will look at a little more in detail later. But uh, if you uh, look at it very um, wide across uh, the open source uh, distributed data systems, um, it actually first started as an um, SDFS name node use case. Um, Twitter used it for uh, its Manhattan database, which is again a distributed key value store. Um, there is a relational database uh, basically uh, built on top of Apache Bookkeeper as a distributed key value store and on top of it using Apache Kel site, they have a, a SQL layer. So um, the HerdDB database also stores its data uh, on top of Apache Bookkeeper. Um, so then of course in Apache Pulsar, you store all the messages and the uh, offsets of different uh, consumers uh, in Bookkeeper. At Salesforce, it is well known to be used at massive scale. Um, it, it is uh, sort of known to be uh, scaling to hundreds of terabytes of data. Um, and there's a system similar to uh, your Kafka's and Kinesis and Pelsers called Prevega. Um, it is again um, using uh, Apache Bookkeeper as the message store. ByteDance, which is the parent company of uh, the famous uh, 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 a short uh, video store uh, called uh, TikTok. Uh, they use Bookkeeper as an internal metadata store. 
so if you if you look at the traditional systems they used to um, have this problem uh, that uh, they used to use uh, hard disk drives with hard disk drives uh, uh, random uh, writes is a big problem uh, random fetching in any way is a problem because of uh, seek uh, needing uh, uh, rotations and stuff and then setting offsets and all of that so uh, to offset that uh, we used to have a uh, b tree based indexes uh, which would allow you to navigate to that exact position and allow your uh, reads to be more efficient and uh, b tree is really the index behind a lot of uh, long term proven databases like mysql and postgres and it is used for uh, indexing data in your uh, mysql or postgres tables uh, overlay uh, we have this new uh, data structure for indexing which is log structured merge trees uh, which provides really good write throughput which is the need of the hour for last decade or so and uh, log merge uh, log log structured merge trees uh, for which rocksdb is an implementation uh, rocksdb if you look at it is uh, an extremely uh, important technology today uh, and it supports a variety of modern workloads um, in terms of streaming technologies uh, it is the uh, stories behind apache bookkeeper uh, kafka streams uses uh, rocksdb apache pulsar uh, uses bookkeeper so it uses rocksdb under the hood flink also uh, used to use rocksdb uh, for its state store uh, these days they have a fork, a fork that is tailor made for their own use case um, if you look at oltp databases the transactional databases um, mysql these days has a storage engine uh, called myrox which is based on rocksdb and uh, works behind uh, mysql uh, as a storage engine uh, behind MongoDB, you have Mongo Rocks is its uh, storage engine. Behind behind Cassandra, Cassandra you have Rocksandra. Um, it is also behind uh, your distributed SQL databases uh, that have come about in last uh, uh, ten odd years, uh, which is Yugabyte and CockroachDB, and it is behind both of those databases. If even if you look at uh, time series databases, Influx itself has a fork of um, uh, <clears throat> uh, LSM called uh, TSM where it again uh, uses similar concept. So you can see that um, uh, RocksDB or LSM is actually behind a variety of modern workloads. And this is what Bookkeeper leverages. So it, it really shows you the um, true uh, storage technology that does work well for Bookkeeper. And uh, now that we have SSDs, we have a scope for higher throughput uh, um, on writes. And uh, RocksDB and LSM actually uh, leverages that quite well that is why you see that all these uh, modern uh, workloads provide uh, architecture that is good for high write throughput uh, here i uh, have uh, put a comparison of uh, b3 with uh, different uh, uh, variations of lsm and you can see that b3 uh, is really good when you want to uh, optimize for the reads uh, for for such workloads where uh, reads can be a little bit of Place, but uh, uh, there isn't a lot of rights. The systems are as good. Uh, obviously, that is why MySQL and Postgres still today are rock solid and being used behind a lot of important technology. Uh, LSM, uh, on the other hand, um, is good for point. It says in this uh, comparison, uh, for range, it would struggle just a little bit. Um, for rights, it's really good though. For uh, space on space optimization, it scores uh, the best. Um, if you look at uh, Size tiers LSM again, it's optimized for writes. Uh, uh, and I'll, I'll uh, leave uh, in the reference a uh, video from uh, somebody called Mark Kelligan, uh, who's done a really uh, good uh, performance benchmark and he's done a nice video in a conference explaining all these differences. So, key value stores, if you look at it today, are obviously behind uh, key value databases. And if you look at uh, most of the modern relational databases, those are again built on top of uh, key value stores for instance um, you can uh, in a key value store uh, keep the primary key of the relational database in the key of the kv and uh, you can keep the complete row as the value um, uh, so this is your k this is your v which is the uh, key value layer again for document databases 
in the value of the KV, you can put the whole document. Your key could either be internal or you could expose it to the uh, users of the database. Uh, if you look at streaming technologies, they again talked of Pulsar and Kafka streams and Flink and even uh, databases like uh, InfluxDB and all that use uh, key value stores under the hood. So in my opinion, I think uh, in general, if you can uh, keep a key value data stores and make all the different kinds of uh, applications on top of it on the same cluster, it is great. Even if you can't do that, uh, it is nice to have uh, even um, across different clusters, if the base of the cluster is same, and then on top of it, you have different layers, which will provide you this use case of relational uh, guarantees, uh, document database guarantees, uh, streaming workloads, um, streaming analytics, and time series, and all of that uh, with uh, the same RocksDB based LSM implementation. Uh, it is sort of nice to have for the operations uh, ease. If you look at Bookkeeper, we talked a lot about uh, RocksDB and LSM or whatnot. Uh, how, how does it relate to Bookkeeper? Bookkeeper um, actually uh, is uh, RocksDB for you is a key value store. It is made to be um, really good at one thing, the uh, traditional uh, Unix philosophy. So it implements LSM uh, data structure. Uh, it is embeddable. It's a key value store. Uh, it gives you uh, append only storage, but it gives you really a low latency and high throughput because the best you can do at being uh, low latency and high throughput is to just go and write, not spend time finding stuff. So because you only append, you are good here. Um, if you have uh, update, it just goes ahead and appends um, a new value for the same key. Um, so your reads are actually a little bit slower. You have to go through the index and try and find the latest value. Even for deletes, it goes and uh, writes, uh, appends a value uh, saying, imagine a huge log and at the end of it, you go and write um, the fact that you have deleted this. And uh, at the time of read, you can see that the latest value is uh, delete marker. So um, that's how the deletes happen. But uh, the point is that, uh, this is whole design on LSM uh, is uh, really good for low latency and high throughput. Zookeeper on the other hand, we talked about it. It's a extremely important technology used as metadata store in a lot of distributed database systems um, or distributed, uh, even uh, distributed uh, streaming systems. Um, it uh, does cluster coordination. It does service discovery. Uh, it uh, is used in a lot of real election use cases. Um, dynamic configuration where you can set watches and uh, uh, get notifications on those watches. You can use it for making feature flags and all of that. And Bookkeeper is actually, uh, imagine it as uh, RocksDB uh, in one system and then RocksDB uh, on a lot of different systems. And those are all coordinated using Zookeeper. Of course, there's more to Bookkeeper where there is a um, application uh, called uh, Ledger and all of that. And then there are APIs on top of Ledgers. But under the hood, it's basically RocksDB, which is for one node and then a cross node to distribute and coordinate. We use Zookeeper. Uh, going uh, internally uh, inside the Bookkeeper next, and then we will see how those um, internals are uh, leveraged to understand Pulsar better. Um, so uh, we talked about Bookkeeper supporting uh, tunable replication. The three factors that uh, it provides you to tune uh, your application is bookkeeper ensemble, write quorum, and act quorum. So uh, for a given piece of data, uh, what so you could have a lot of bookkeepers. You have one, two, three, four, five, and then, then you have other bookkeepers. Uh, so one dot dot x. Uh, among those for a given piece of data, you just want to replicate it across bookies. One, two bookies, five. So uh, but within that, you want to have a right quorum of just three. So incidentally, for this data, let's say uh, we selected bookkeeper two, three, and four. We could have even selected bookkeeper one, two, and three because we want to uh, just have uh, three pieces of uh, this data uh, for the replication and fault tolerant purpose. But it can be spread across the whole ensemble. Act quorum is even though you want to have uh, three uh, as the replication factor. So you have three copies of data, but you're fine if you get act from any two of those three. This is really good if your network is not really uh, very, very stable. One of the nodes goes here and there. You still have 
really good throughput in a typical uh, usage a bookkeeper uh, is distributed we talked about it uh, and it is distributed using zookeeper for metadata um, operations and on top of um, uh, the whole uh, cluster where a uh, bookie store data and they coordinate using zookeeper uh, you have these uh, couple of apis ledger apis is where we will concentrate mostly because that's what pulsar uses but there is also um, log stream apis and uh, which is sort of a little bit higher level uh, concept we'll look at what a ledger is and what the ledger apis are but below here i have again put a link you can go through this link this is done by um, cg who is the ceo of stream native the company behind pulsar and it's a really good blog i'll also leave that blog in the reference section so if you look at um, a couple we will look at some um, four uh, terms uh, to help us uh, talk about bookkeeper uh, going ahead so if you write a piece of data so in case of pulsar for instance you want to um, write a message to pulsar uh, or let's say uh, uh, to have a higher throughput you want to write a batch of messages uh, in pulsar so that batch of messages that one unit of write that you write to pulsar pulsar at one point of time that thing uh, is actually written as bytes uh, and internally in uh, bookkeeper it is called an entry so an entry is your smallest unit of data that uh, bookkeeper recognizes so let's say if you have a, a entry log file uh um, you have every entry that is a me message or a batch of a message uh we talked about uh, the uh, sequence of all these uh, entries uh, which forms your entry log file and uh, it's a storage system on top of um lsm so we talked about uh, all the different things like um writes are append and uh, sort of uh, the updates and deletes are uh, written as appends and over time there will be garbage collection where the stale copies the older copies will be cleaned up and the latest ones will be written to a new file and the old file will be sort of um, garbage collected uh <coughs> journal is uh, sort of uh, your similar thing as write ahead log in mysql and postgres um again uh, this uh, supports append only semantics so it's really the best that you can do with writes that are durable um it has low latency high throughput we talked about these things and uh, uh so bookkeeper uh, if you look at the latest work there's also some work around <coughs> uh, trading off with uh, putting journal off for even better throughput uh, on writes uh we will look at uh, the usage uh, in the write path and read path of bookkeeper but for now let's say that when you write uh, the first thing that you do is just write to uh, the end of the journal file append to it and then you come back so you have it durable uh, for reads how do we handle it we will see going ahead um ledger is really uh, we talked about entry log file which is actually a physical file in the book bookkeeper uh, system of records ledger is a higher level logical abstraction and there are really good benefits of uh, looking at ledger um, uh, with uh, the logical uh, construct again it's a append only semantics or everywhere uh, and then you uh, have indexing and caching and all of those for uh, querying your ledgers or entries inside the ledger um, if you look at a ledger it flows uh, a lot of different things like status of the ledger it is open or is it closed or is the last entry we will we'll again look at those things going ahead if you look at a bookkeeper cluster um one of the reasons why bookkeeper is really amazing uh to be used as um the backend for a lot of different databases is that bookkeeper doesn't really do a lot of things if you look at uh, one node of bookkeeper it does not do anything different from the other nodes of the bookkeeper in the cluster again a unix philosophy of just doing one small thing and doing it really well so each bookkeeper uh, node only does one thing which is storage no leader no follower nothing the whole replication and coordination and consistency across the cluster that is done through a really a uh, thick client uh, that you can leverage uh, as the user of the system we will see how uh, pulsar does that and uh, they have a uh, separate uh, uh process that uh, runs looking uh, at all the uh, 
um, if, if there is a node that crashes, so you have uh, for one data you, uh, piece of data, you had said that you need three copies. So one bookkeeper is lost. You lost one copy. So this um, uh, auto detection of uh, that lost copy will kick in. It will detect what is lost and then it will recover from different uh, places where it is there to make sure that the replication factor is maintained. Bookkeeper has this uh, high level APIs where you can create a ledger synchronously or asynchronously. You can append an entry uh, to an open ledger. You can read entries from the ledger, of course, and then you can uh, delete ledgers, sync or async way. Uh, if you look at the right path of bookkeeper that I said earlier, right? Uh, you have a bookkeeper client. Uh, we talked about uh, this being responsible for replication. Um, every bookkeeper server node uh, just does um, storage. So the first thing that it uh, goes uh, uh, does is uh, writes to the end of the general log file using the ledger APIs. And uh, like I said, it only appends, but not only does is, uh, does it write to journal files for storage, it also writes to write cache. So uh, write cache is an in-memory thing. This is for your uh, durability. Um, in journal, you just go and append at the end. So let's say these are uh, these, these, these two journal files are the old files. You can't go and change them. You can only uh, take the open general file and write at the end of it. So write is really uh, low latency and high throughput. But uh, for reading things, uh, you have this sorted day sort of data structure. Uh, this is not temporal sorted. This is you sort it uh, uh, for let for instance, if you look at Pulsar for one topic, you would probably uh, query uh, the data on that topic uh, together. So for one topic, it will try to write everything together in write cache. This is a sorted structure. This is a cache and in memory. So uh, keeping it sorted doesn't really cost a lot. Um, if you look at the reads, again, you have ledger APIs for the reads. Um, but uh, <clears throat> you have uh, entry log files where, <clears throat> and you have a read cache. Uh, <clears throat> so the this is the whole section from where uh, this is the whole section from where the read happens. This is where uh, the write happens. And for journals and ledgers, you can have different disks attached to it. So if you uh, write a lot of messages into Pulsar, it is not, uh, and uh, IO is choked on the disk that is attached to um, journal file. Uh, it will not uh, affect your um, consumers which are uh, reading it. So IO isolation is something that works really well for Pulsar. Um, if you look at the read path exactly, the first thing your read will do is it will go and try to find um, in write cache. Remember when we wrote first, we wrote in journal for durability, but write cache for reads later. Um, if it is not there in the read cache, uh, then it goes and looks at the, uh, it's not there in the write cache, then it goes and looks at the read cache. If it's still not there in the read cache, then it actually goes and look as, looks at the entry log files, which are really the physical files that store your data. And over entry log files, again, you have a uh, RocksDB based uh, index, a sort of SS tables uh, kind of and mem tables kind of a structure where um, you can actually uh, go with the uh, ledger and uh, entry ID and find the offset. Uh, let's say with the ledger ID and entry ID, you found this offset, it redirects you to an offset in this entry log file, and you just uh, read this entry. For um, some other ledger ID and entry ID, in the end, uh, you find in the index that there's another offset. It redirects to uh, this entry log file in this location, and you read it. Uh, <clears throat> we talked about writing only to write cache. How do you then read from read cache and entry log file? So one, this is uh, sorted. Um, so it will, when it is flushed, it will actually uh, sort in the uh, flush in the sorted order um, across read cache and the entry log files. And this flush actually um, is done as an asynchronous task. That is why you write to read cache, uh, write cache initially. And uh, this is done in a batched fashion um, to have uh, less number of disk access. Uh, <clears throat> if you look at the sort of, uh, we talked about uh, this uh, ledger file uh, on uh, which entries are written in Bookkeeper. Ledger file again is a logical concept. So you keep writing entries, you have add, uh, let's say all the green entries are what we have already added. Um, the end of it is called uh, last add confirmed. 
uh, there are some that are uh, that got uh, a request on bookkeeper to be written but we have not act to the client so um, this this set of things are those the yellow ones uh, and the sort of tip of that is actually what we called last uh, ad pushed so readers can actually uh, read until here which is your lag they cannot read uh, beyond um, this seems to be wrongly placed uh, this should actually be only until here so at this point of time if the writer cashes um uh, bookkeeper actually opens uh, one more uh, ledger uh, there is a consensus that again happens and with that consensus um, in case of network partition or bookie failure or something um, it will go and first uh, fence this ledger file so this is completely uh, closed for writing uh, by the time if the new writer comes it tries to write it will be rejected and uh, this uh, new bookkeeper uh, which is trying to write that data on the retry uh, will try to write to this new ledger after fencing the previous one that is how sort of uh, split brain is handled in bookkeeper we we'll look at um, the pulsar use case uh, pulsar i uh, talked about it earlier it's a cloud native um, completely distributed uh, messaging and streaming platform it has a modular design you can horizontally scale uh storage and compute and both of them completely independent of each other uh we talked about latency and throughput uh multi tenancy is something that really helps uh with operations uh and isolation uh geo replication again um uh, is something that is provided uh, out of the box with pulsar you just have to uh, have one global metadata store which is again zookeeper if you look at pulsar internally it has a broker these are uh, stateless nodes so you they, you can sort of kill those you can bring them up and it doesn't really matter all the and this is for uh, computation if you need a uh, more serving capacity you just scale horizontally on this level our uh, storage is done via bookkeeper's ledger apis bookkeeper itself uses a uh, zookeeper for metadata and the same zookeeper cluster is also used by a uh, broker for uh, the cluster coordination among the nodes of the broker uh, we looked at this picture earlier this is the same picture i have repeated so i can explain concepts um like pulsar use case on top of this so if you look at the bookkeeper client uh this bookkeeper client like would expect is uh embedded inside the pulsar's broker uh and that is how a uh, broker uh controls uh replication across different uh, bookkeeper nodes um uh, now the broker uh, apart from having the uh, capability to write to bookkeeper for storage of course also has this notion of topics that you would have in a pub sub where you can uh, publish data you can consume data and uh, uh, you have multiple topics all of them have different set of data um if you look at one topic uh, internally um, every topic uh, actually has a concept called a managed ledger for it uh, these these are the three set of files for that actually physically stay uh, Uh, on top of uh, bookkeeper nodes uh, uh broker topic actually has a concept called managed ledger which manages the ledger for that topic so it actually manages data um for this topic spread across different files um in the bookkeeper system of records a topic uh, like i explained uh knows what uh, ledgers um it is uh, writing uh, it has written to and it is currently writing to Uh, where the schema for this topic decides um, are the garbage is the garbage collection uh, done for certain ledgers uh, so that uh, you can remove the stale records and deleted records for a uh, higher read throughput um, uh, a ledger knows which uh, topic it is written to using the metadata in metadata you the pulsar uh, stores the topic which this ledger uh, belongs to the size of the ledger the range of entries written again the entry is uh, one specific data that is written to bookkeeper the um at the smallest atomic indivisible unit and of course the primary key ledger id of the ledger all of these things and uh, apart from this managed ledger um which is the data storage behind pulsar we also talked initially that offsets are also stored as bookkeeper um uh, constructs so cursor is nothing but uh, you have uh, on a given topic you have a lot of different consumers you may have more consumers here so um at one point of time one consumer is here another consumer could be here uh, another consumer could be here in your topic so um 
the, the, these offsets have to be stored against the uh, consumers and uh, that is called a, a cursor in pulsar uh, language and the cursor which is um, uh, basically the offsets of consumers uh, as in uh, till what point have they read on that topic those those things are also stored inside bookkeeper uh, if you look at the uh, coordination that uh, uh, bookkeeper and pulsar uh, do using zookeeper um, the, it stores pointer to data we talked about a topic ledger mapping uh, with the help of this construct called managed ledger uh, that is there um, schema we talked about it so topic in schema mapping is there in the zookeeper uh, zookeeper is used for service discovery what's the list of available bookkeepers what is the list of available brokers um, which broker owns which topic uh, this actually um, is a construct in pulsar where one topic is always owned by one specific uh, broker at a given point of time this uh, helps with caching data for a topic for faster uh, reads again uh, which topic has how much load this is used in the load balancing algorithms in uh, pulsar so um, load can be distributed across brokers uh, distributed coordination like uh, lock and leader collection uh, leader election is uh, done using uh, zookeeper then dynamic configuration so you don't have to restart systems uh, provisioning configuration all of these are stored in zookeeper uh, in summary i would say that um, uh, to, in today's uh, age we have a lot of different types of workloads different types of use cases and then there are a lot of databases a lot of different queuing systems and streaming systems and stream analytics systems so a lot of different kinds of systems and uh, you don't want to have a uh, complete top to bottom separate uh, cluster for every one of them because every cluster uh, operation and management and upgrade and security and all of these uh, features like enterprise readiness uh, is difficult to do so if you can have some common structure and um, that uh, helps you with storage and coordination on top of which you have layers which will uh, give you this thing of key value storage transactional databases time series databases streams uh, that's great it really has uh, helped us um, do that uh, on um, less operations day by day rocks db we talked about it is very popular as a lsm implementation when a lot of different variety of workloads um, bookkeeper is a consistency first or a cp kind of a system and a distributed key value store uh, it gives you an infinite commit uh, commit log as a service uh, you can use it in a lot of different ways and apache pulsar is one example but it is uh, bookkeeper is really the fault tolerant and horizontally scalable uh, storage behind pulsar that uh, makes the storage in pulsar possible uh, I have put uh, the references. This is the blog that I was uh, talking about, uh, where uh, uh, not a blog. This is a talk where uh, Mark Culligan he has done his benchmarks and he sort of does a really nice comparison between LSM, uh, different flavors of LSM, and B tree for uh, different workloads. Um, this Foundation DB record layer is a white paper again where they explain uh, Foundation DB is a key value store again uh, that. Uh, um, is owned by Apple today, and it is again open source. And then uh, this paper describes how they make a, a row system of records, sort of similar to a transactional data, a relational database, um, on top of a key value store, Apache uh, Bookkeeper, uh, the consistency, durability, and all by CG. This is a great blog. Uh, this blog by Jack on how Pulsar works is amazing. Again, I've learned so much over um, going through this blog again and again. Uh, then uh, I initially uh, I, I did a uh, talk on how Pulsar exactly stores your data that has more than this about how Bookkeeper is used uh, inside Pulsar and then um, then there is this another talk by CG that you can watch. Um, you can uh, uh, of course uh, uh, write all your questions to me uh, on the open chat, but you can also. Uh, catch me later on linkedin or you can catch me on twitter i'll leave the slide deck on slide share and you can find my previous talks on uh, youtube and uh, if i get a recording of this uh, talk i'll again sort of maybe try and put it inside uh, or link it inside this so uh, thank you